Hello students, so today we're going to look at relations and functions. What you're going to have on you, or you're going to want to have on you, is your notes and a pen or a pencil today. No calculator is needed. So some key words that we've, we're going to be talking about today. Very first one, which is a relation. A relation is a set of points consisting of input values and output values. We've seen relations before. They're x and y's. And what a relation means is that x is related to y in some fashion. And usually they'll tell you how. Um, a relation can be viewed as ordered pairs, a graph, a table, an equation, or just written in sentences. If they just say that x is related to y by, then they'll tell you where. What's cool about relations is there's such a thing called your domain and your range. Now, we've talked about domain and range related to graphing. But domain and range, you can even just look at numbers and find domain and range. Your domain are your x values. So the input values, the numbers that you put into that. Your range are your y values, which is the output values. So let's take a look here. We need to determine the domain and range of this relation. So you see I have these ordered pairs and they're all put together. And I want to know Who's my domain and who's my range? So I need to figure out now if you remember domain meant it was your x values. So what is the domain and what is the range? Our domain are our x values. So it's got to be those guys right there. So I'm going to list them in an order of 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. I listed my x values, the things the arrows are pointing at currently. So that's my domain. What is the range? Well, that's just the y values right there. So the y values are negative 6, negative 3, negative 1, 0, 1, and 10. So we put them in a list with curly braces as for to list them in. So that's how you identify your domain and a range when you're given ordered pairs like that. So let's take a look at this. We have this gas prices problem. And it says a gas station sells gasoline for $3.05 per gallon. A lot more than currently. The table shows a relation of gallons and cost, where cost depends on the number of gallons purchased. So our input values would be our gallons of gas because cost is related to how many gallons I buy, right? If I buy two gallons, it's going to cost me $6.10. $6.10 does not cause me to buy two gallons. It's the other way around. So what we need to do is we're going to graph this. So if I make this my chart over here, and this is my gallons area. And this is going to be my cost. So my gallons, I can go by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Um, each of these, I think I'm just going to go up by 3.05. There we go. So now, if we would graph each of those points, you would see that you would get a line that looks something like that. It makes a line, right? It makes a perfect straight line. So the question we got to answer is, is a relation a function? Now, just a reminder what a function means. A function is a relation where every x value is paired with one unique y value. Very important. One unique. 
So that means every x can only have one y attached to it. I can't have one x going to two different y's. That just ain't going to work. So we need to ask ourselves, is this a function? So let's look here. And let's see, is each x have its own y value? So 0 goes to negative 6, 2 goes to negative 3, 4 goes to negative 1, 6 goes to 0, 8 goes to 1, and 10 goes to 10. There is no multiple x's in this problem. Because of that, we know it is in fact a function because each x value has one y value mapped or to it, related to it. Let's look here. What about this problem? So let's look through it here. Negative 1 maps to negative 7. 1 is to 0. 2 is to negative 3. 0 is to negative 8. 0 is to 5. Negative 2 is to negative 1. But wait, you're thinking, hold, hold on, Miss Marsh. Hold on. Notice, we have two zeros here for x's. Do they have the same y value? I don't think so. Negative 8 is not related to 5. This one's a no. This is not a function because one x value is going to two different y's. That can't happen. We can't have that happen. The vertical line test is a way for us to test if we have a function or not when given a graph. The vertical line test is tells us if you have a function, if a vertical line can be drawn through its graph and it passes through only one point. How, this is how I do the vertical line test. I take a pencil and I move it from left to right and if it crosses my graph more than once, I don't have a function. That's just it just can't be a function. So here is the vertical line test. Would this graph right here, would this be a function or not? So what we're going to do is we're going to take our pencil right there and we're going to start kind of moving it along the line. So there I hit the line. Am I hitting that line more than once with my pencil? No, I'm not. Let's keep moving. Let's make sure that I'm not going to hit it more. Uh, there I hit again. Uh, did I hit it more than once? Nope, I didn't. So the vertical line tells me that since I only hit it once each time I move my pencil, I have a yes. This function is in fact or this, excuse me, this relation is in fact a function. Let's check out this guy. So I have this circle graph right here. So we're going to take our pencil, just like last time, and we're going to move it along the graph. There I hit the graph. Do I hit that graph more than once right there? Nope, it doesn't look like it. Let's keep moving. Let's make sure we don't hit it more than once. Oh, look at that. Hold on. I looks like my pencil hits the top of the circle and the bottom of the circle. That can't happen. I can't have that for a function. So this relation is not a function because I hit the graph more than once with my pencil. That's the end of the video. See you later.